Hello, everyone. I am Stephen Malorna, owner of Prosperity Counseling. All right, great. So I am very happy to be uh, offering this webinar to Pineapple Support and helping out where I can. Burnout, ambition, and self-sabotage. So this is going to be way less uh, formal than my previous webinars, and we're mainly going to be focusing on you now just getting the main ideas through. If you have any questions, feel free to pop any of those questions in the chat or Q and A. If you'd like to raise your hand, there is a button there as well, and we will go from there. So, first things first, I'm not going to talk to you about two things: patience, and I'm not going to reduce your ambition. Patience, while it does have its place, it doesn't have its place here. I don't like talking about it. You probably don't like hearing it as much as it's okay to say, hey, sometimes we do need to be more patient or whatever. Let's not do that in cases around burnout and ambition because you want to get to the riches, the life, the chilling at the beach, the retirement, the fun times that you want to. And let's not slow that down work towards it and we'll keep going towards it but in a way that does not cause burnout or exacerbate it in ambition i am not here to lower your ambitions either your goal is to get to the moon let's get you on that rocket so burnouts what's the definition i can give you the clinical thing if you want that look it up i'm going to trust you guys to be able to use google we all work too much or if you maybe you don't I definitely work too much, but maybe a lot of other people also work too much. If you're, co if you're coming to this webinar, you'll probably work too much. We probably reach some level of overwhelm, de-energization, some point where it's like, I can't take one more step forward or I'm going to lose my mind. You, unfortunately, we've, most people recognize the signs of burnout after we're already at a point where we needed our vacation or we needed that time to slow down or integrate into a better lifestyle most of the time by the time someone says steve i'm burnt out it's like oh you've been burnt out for weeks months sometimes years and the concept is we need first we need to be able to recognize it and then we need to be able to recognize what the actual point of it is the point of burnout is to say, hey, we're tapped out. We need to change our life or get something better so we can actually live the life we want. Back in the day, it was a survival mechanism. It was depleted our energy stores. And you know, maybe we need to go get that extra mile just to run out, outrun that saber-toothed tiger or whatever is hunting us. But in the modern day, it's more like we need to figure out how to integrate the life we want, have the life we want in such a way we don't have to experience this again or at the very least if we experience it again it's not going to be overwhelming so let's see if i can use this share screen button uh, sorry one second just bear with me as i'm uh okay wait. looks like i can't okay you're right i can, i definitely can share the screen Give me one second. So we're going to start with cognitive distortions. Cool. You guys can see this. We're just going to go through this real quick. If you want a little bit more information about cognitive distortions, please check out my other webinar video called Stress and Harmful Beliefs, also hosted by Pineapple Support. You can check that out on Pineapple Support's YouTube channel. So all or nothing thinking, looking at things in absolute black and white categories. I like to tie this idea into perfectionism. A lot of times one of my clients will come to me and say, if it's not done right, or if it's not done perfectly, why do it at all? And the reason is good enough is good enough. A lot of times they'll fight me on that because they say, hmm, Steve, no, I can't just be good enough. It has to be completely perfect. And we'll get into a little bit more of the reasons why around that a little bit later overgeneralization. You view a negative event as never-ending patterns of defeat. Hey, I'm burnt out. I'm almost, a, I can't see a way out of it. Here's something that bad that's happened. I'm cursed. I'm just, this is one more step on the line to, you know, just not living the life I want. We're just con constantly being drained, not getting into the ambitions, meeting my goals. 
mental filter blowing on the negative and ignoring the positive. That's a big, that's a big problem when you're burnt out already. Hey, something good could happen to you or an opportunity to re-energize you could come up, but you might either discount it, like you won't even see the thing. Discounting the positives. Maybe something good does happen to you, but you don't view it as actually that worthwhile. If you do a hundred good things and one bad thing, you're not viewing that hundred good things. You're only focusing on that one thing you screwed up. Jumping to conclusions. We're gonna actually skip that one. We'll save that for later. Magnification and minimization. Hey, something, a mole, mole, mole hill happens. And we create a mountain of it. I stub my toe and you're just like, mm, I am cursed. God hates me. The, the spirits after me. The, like, the devil's after me and God isn't answering my phone calls. Whatever it is. It's like, here's something small, but because we're burnt out or maybe just because we're viewing things negatively in the first place, it becomes way bigger than it already is. Or once again, going the other direction, something really good, something really important, something massive might need to be addressed or might need to be acknowledged. But instead, we are being like, I don't have time for that. It's not that big a deal. I'm discounting it. I'm saying this isn't a big deal. And maybe that's also some way to protect us from having to face even more overwhelm. Emotional reasoning when we're burnt out, we're viewing everything through the lenses of being burnt out. It's saying something like, ah. yeah, if, if you see something, it's not just cloudy. Everything is just dark. You have an idea of like, if I feel bad, I am bad. If I feel good, I am good. If I feel angry, I must be justified. If I feel uh, anxious, there must be a threat. Something like that. Should statements, this is a real big one, especially when you're burning out and you're overworking. And it doesn't matter if this is engaging in uh, actual career work or you're taking care of the kids or you're taking care of your car or you're just taking care of your house, whatever the things are, whatever the responsibilities are. I have to, I should, I must, I ought. That can definitely lead to burnout or be a symptom of it. Labeling. Uh, we're going to actually skip that one. Um, personalization and blame. Hey, something bad goes, goes wrong, something happens. Maybe I just feel crappy. I must be crappy. I must be a terrible person. A person with more of their life put together, a per stronger person who's stronger, they wouldn't have this. I must be a loser. That can get pretty self-judging and very self-vindictive when we get to that personalization and blame things. So I hope everyone is tracking on that. So first things first, I like awareness. When we're burnt out, maybe we're seeing much more of these instances of cognitive distortions, seeing things very, very bleak, seeing things in a way that's like, it's not objectively true. It's not even subjectively true. It just, it just feels shitty. That's what it is. If you are seeing this thing and you're saying, hmm, oh, what I really do is you know, one, three, 10, then look at it and make sure, like, take a quick note, be like, okay, wait a minute, when I get burnt out, when I get stressed off, stressed out, maybe I need to be more aware that I am dwelling on the negative, or I am blaming myself more than I should be, or the average there does. So awareness is key. Awareness is 80% of everything you do. I really want to go to, again, the should statements, the needs. Actually, let me skip ahead and then I'll come back to this. I'm going to instead move us over to a different slide. I'm get, and if I'm overwhelming you guys with too much theory too quickly, slow me down. Let me know in the question and answer or the chat. Oh, will these documents be available so we can print them out? I would be happy to send these to either Pineapple Support to disseminate to you guys. And yeah, I'll, I mean, yeah, that would be perfectly fine. I'll be happy to send this. No problem, Jerry. All right, here's Steve Melora's very oversimplified explanation of what a flow state is. So you're playing a video game, but you played it about 10,000 times before. Boring. 
I'm so good. I'm a level 50. I'm playing Skyrim. I'm left with level 50 conjurer slash fighter, or whatever. You have all the best skills, etc. It's not that exciting anymore. It's boring. We've already got a thousand hours in it. There's no novelty. Some people will say, Steve, I can play Skyrim forever. I'm just using this as an example. We're too bored. We're too far on the right side. Versus, hey, things are too tough. I have, let's, let's give a tech skill. I have, I, I personally, I, Steve Malora, am the worst carpenter on planet Earth. I don't know which end of the hammer to use. But I'm trying to put together an, um, an armoire. I'm trying to put together some furniture or whatever. And I'm doing this thing. And it's like, I have no idea where the slots are, what some of these pieces are called. It's too much. It's a little too anxiety provoking, too stressful. Well, here's the flow state. Not too stressful, not too anxiety provoking, not too boring, not too easy. And I really like this very simplified version because it's, it's, a, it's a graph. It's clear, but also this flow state is pretty wide. So you might be going, you know, up and down this, but still in the flow state. Maybe you're even hitting a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of boredom as you're going through a skill or an activity over time. But the idea is we are engaged in something in a way where we are perfectly having fun, having an, an excitement, a connection, in a way that we are kind of losing time. If you've ever enjoyed something so much that it kind of like your time just disappears, it goes pretty, it doesn't even go fast. It goes more like I'm not even aware of time passing because I'm so engaged in this moment. That's a flow space. So when we're talking about burnout and we're talking about our goals, one of the things we might want to say is while I'm working, while I'm doing my daily activities, I'm going to try to do things in a way that engaged in that flow state. Now there's much more information about flow state that we're not going to get into in this session, this webinar, but I want you to be aware of what this is. Because a lot of times I will work with people who either take on too much responsibility, too much energy, too much stress, and they say, I need to do X, Y, Z, and I'm working 80 hours a week, and I never sleep, and all this other stuff is like too much. Slow it down. Let's actually get you to a place where it's manageable. Or they are so burnt out because they're bored. There's no purpose. There's no meaning. There's no challenge. And it's like, okay, let's get you something new, some novelty, some adventure so you can like pump up your life a little bit. Now, this is great for work, for all the adult daily level, daily living activities that you have to do, whether it's fixing your car, brushing your teeth. Cool. Maybe brushing your teeth is too boring. Do it anyway. But let's talk a little bit about self-care. now. When I work with my clients, I usually end by saying, I pulled a lot out of you. And usually I do because I'm a pretty challenging counselor. I pulled a lot out of you. What are you doing for self-care to re-energize yourself? So self-care is anything that adds positive energy to your life, to your soul, to your heart, to your mind. For me, it's being on two wheels. I love being in my butt. I haven't got a chance because the weather's dumb and I hate it. But the concept is generally, if it was warm and sunny and I could wear shorts, I'd be like, all right, if I'm doing 60 miles and I'm physically exhausted, I'm mentally pumped up. We want that for our self care, for our coping skills. Something in our pocket to say, hey, going to my counselor, Steve, was pretty draining. I need to play some guitar, go snowboarding, go engage with people, have a, you know, have an actual discussion with another human being, whatever it is that actually pumps you up. And that applies to work and that applies to plenty of other things. When I work with people and I say, hey, do you have any self-care skills? Sometimes they'll say, especially if they're, you know, just starting out with me, I have none except for Netflix or Hulu or whatever. And I usually say, yeah, sometimes, you know, digital media can be exciting, but it doesn't really energize. Most of the time when we're viewing the Netflix, it's more of a, I was really stressed at work today, and I'm just getting myself back to neutral. Going from distressed to zombie, to at least like, like just apathy is probably a better way to put it. And the idea is we need more. If we're burnt out, we need more energization. We need something to fill our life up, fill our tanks up. 
And so if you don't actually have any self-care skills, A, see me and I'll help you find them. Or actually just look online. There's plenty of lists. You can even start with, hey, here's a list of 200 self-care skills. I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna do it. I'm just gonna look through them and find three I might be interested in. But the idea is you don't have to have self-care, if you don't have self-care skills, please start looking and start sampling. If you do have self-care, uh, self-care skills, excuse me, seashells, seashells, um, continue to use them. And that's another thing. Sometimes, especially when my clients are burnt out, they'll say something like, Steve, I don't have time for self-care. I'm the business owner, I'm the CEO, or maybe I'm just like working 16 hours a day. And it's like, you need to find time. Because if you are not finding time, your burnout's going to increase and it's going to keep on causing problems for you and everyone around you. Let's see what we have here. <laughs> all right, yes, tongue twisters, definitely. I'm not good at tongue twisters at all, um, but that's okay. So we want our self-care skills to be in that flow state as well. Maybe you want to start out challenging yourself, making it a little bit stressful. Maybe you want to start like doing something a little bit easy. But either way, we need to eventually get to that flow state where we're actually enjoying ourselves. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, specific ambitions. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what seems to get in the way of those. We're going to use our flow state, our cognitive distortion information that we are all experts in now, and we're going to get to it. So let's say I'm, hmm, let's say my goal is to make a million dollars, to look like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, and to get a yacht and travel the world. Sounds pretty good, right? I would be very happy to do those things. Now, the concept is, can I do it in a day? If I can, awesome. But chances are it's going to take more time and it's going to be a continuous and repeated effort over a long term. While we're pursuing those goals, we have to be very aware that sometimes we are engaging in cognitive distortion and self-judgmental beliefs that really, really screw us up. So if you want to be very vulnerable, please leave some of your ambitions in the chat. Any goals you have can be simple. It could be, I want to make a million dollars. Or it could be, hey, I just want to like, you know, put a garden in my, my, in my house or, you know, travel more, whatever it is you would like to say. But, the, but let's get to it. What, sometimes when I work with my clients, they'll say something like, when I get to X, then I will be able to relax. Once I look like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, then I'll stop spending all my time and energy at the gym. Now, if your goal is to get, what, get that big and awesome, go to the gym, do what you need to do, take that time. But the idea is when I get to X, then I will live. This is a double-edged sword because sometimes it's true. Sometimes we really do have to say, hey, I really just need to slay some dragons. I need to get my goals set, get my goals set up in such a way that I can actually handle whatever the world throws at me. I love that. But most of the time, it's not that clear. Most of the time, it's saying something like, I'm almost deferring life or deferring pursuit of self-care, pursuit of enjoyment until I'm almost at a perfect place, almost like the stars align. Once the stars align, then I can live my life. And my normal response to that is, well, can we actually enjoy life and pursue the life we want at the same time? Can I be okay with being looking like this, say, hey, I love myself, and I'm going to go to the gym enough to look like Dwayne the Rock Jones? Can I say, I'm actually pretty stable and happy with my numbers in my bank account and my money flowing in, and I'm pursuing becoming a millionaire. Sometimes a lot of people, well, let's go back to that all or nothing thinking. A lot of times they'll say no, and I'll have to fight them on it, or at least gently dance with them in order to get, have them see things a different way and say something like, no, these are not mutually exclusive. 
you can love yourself, you can be content, and you can pursue your ambitions. It's hard to understand sometimes. I have a lot of clients who sometimes don't. Sometimes they say, I'm afraid of being too content. I'm afraid of being too lazy. And usually I say, hmm, I work with a lot of workaholics and high achieving individuals. I say, hmm, I understand the fear. You can reduce your workload or your work ethic by a lot. Laziness is never going to be your problem. Okay, let's see what someone says. Natalie says, I want to become self-sufficient and fund a trip to Scotland with my OF. I love that. Good. Absolutely. Self-sufficient and travel. Scotland sounds nice. Not now because I hate the cold so much. And I know it's spring, but it's cold where I'm at. So, yes. Kudos. Absolutely do it. Pursuing. So let's take let's tie that back a little bit into the burnout idea. Here's ambition. I'm gonna I'm gonna work towards it. I'm gonna burn myself out and keep burning fuel fumes until I get there. First, not mutually exclusive ideas. I can say I'm actually pretty chill and I'm pursuing my goals. And second, this is a little bit more logical or logistical. How effort, how how efficient. How useful are you when you're burnt out? The answer is probably maybe you're running at 30% capacity, and that's being very generous. I know that when I'm burnt out, I'm useless. I am useless to my clients, and I'm useless to everyone around me because I am trying to pour from an empty cup. I'm too frustrated. I'm too stressed out. I'm too angry. If I get burnt out, first things first, we need prevention. Don't get burnt out. Take the vacation. Do whatever you need to do to keep your keep your happiness and your life integrated. But the other thing is, no, maybe it's time to slow down. Maybe I need to drop some clients for a second, at least for a week, and say, I need to re-energize. Because if I see them, it's actually doing a disservice to them. Now, my direct service line, my, I'm a counselor. If I'm not at my 100%, or at the very least not my 80%, I definitely, it's an ethical reason for me to actually take the time off and come back fresh. Other people will say, well, Steve, we don't have as much of a like direct one-on-one -on -one helping role that you have in regards to counseling. I, you know, just work at a mill with, you know, lath blades spinning at a thousand miles an hour in a dangerous situation. And I say something like, hmm, you being burnt out or even tired is actually a safety hazard now. So that's a huge problem. Other times they'll say, actually, no, maybe, maybe I work in the adult entertainment industry where I can be burnt out and keep working. Hmm, true, maybe there's not a direct danger here, but it's still probably not what you want to do for yourself, for the people around you, or for the product you're creating just an idea you can disagree with me but i would really hope you look at yourself and say hmm if i'm actually burning myself out how effective am i jerry says i would like to start getting paid for my stand-up love it love stand-up comedy um i'm getting paid for film and stage acting for the first time ever now it's on the comedy love it absolutely good see you on stage that is awesome so yes what was i talking about Awareness, or how effective are we? Before that, we were talking about, yes, pursue your goals, pursue your ambitions. Don't pursue your ambitions where you're burning yourself out. And I'm actually gonna, I would like to use your, your example, Jerry, if I can. So start getting paid for stand-up. I've been getting paid for film and stage acting, love it. The idea is how do I juggle everything? And it's a hard question to answer and you're going to have to answer it yourself. If the idea is I want to be a, I don't know, let's let's two very different careers, professional football player and concert violinist. <laughs> kind of hard, right? You can do it. It's just pretty intense. We probably aren't at that. We probably aren't at that extreme, but it's doable. The idea is this is the schedule. This is what I need to practice for physical activity. This is the, what I need to practice for the musical activity. Let's make this thing happen. I'm using these extreme examples, but let's scale it back. So even just giving the example, 
Uh, oh, there's this more because I'm also a voice actor and read audio erotica. Nice and audio book balance is key. Yes, absolutely. Lots of lots of fires on the stove or lots of pans of the fire. I don't remember what the actual phrase. Lots of things going on, juggling. How are we putting all the energy into it? Well, one thing is we can give 10% of our workday to each thing. Let's say we have 10 things going on. 10% of that work day, let's just say you work 40 hours a week, that's four hours a week working on each project you have. Some people are able to do that. Some people are going to say, this is me working on my voiceover. This is me working on my acting. This is me working on my comedy. This is working me working on whatever other performance or other job we have and say, this is the dedication I have. But the idea is, the idea is that we are, um, you know, there's not, a, there's only, what, 170 something hours a week, something like that. I don't know. The idea is that at a certain point, we run out of time, especially if we're trying to do mastery in one thing and mastery in five other things. And we just have to say, maybe we need to either, I'm not going to say get rid of your ambitions, but scale it in regards to time. If you want to write a novel, you can write one page a day, and in a year you have a novel. You can write two pages a day, and in six months you have a novel. Or you can write 10 pages a day, and in 31 days you have a novel. Novel being something about 300 pages. Yes, it needs editing. I'm just using this as an example, though. The idea, how much are you willing to work, and how much are we willing to integrate this into our schedule? I would like to get to what Jerry says. Steve, the thing is I get bored when I do too much of one thing, understandable. And this is me pulling out my hair. Maybe I should shave it like you. Yes, the windswept look. Uh, it is 160 hours. And then of course, yes, yeah, sleep. So sleep takes a third of our day. I know some people do the, you know, Jocko willing sleep less, only sleep three hours a night. See if you can do that, kudos, I need eight. Um, so if the concept is, Let's take it, let's take everything reduced by a third. Yes. You tell us about those extra four hours with it. No, I won't actually. So Jerry says, if you can tell us about those extra four hours with a 172 hour week, that would be awesome. No, because we would just fill it up with work. We don't want to do that. We want to say, this is my work and this is my boundary. So let's get to boundaries. When I'm done for the day, 5 p.m., what I should be doing is putting on my away message on my email, turning off one of my cell phone services, and then going and living personal life for Steve. Sometimes I do that. Other times I forget or leave it on, and sometimes I'll answer some after my hours calls. But the idea is boundaries between your work and your life, or your work and your social life, romantic life parent life, your fun times at the Elks Club, your fun times at the beach, whatever it is. Being able to say, this is where I work, this is where I turn off. When, when I turn off, I really want turn off to also mean re-energize. Taking time for myself and taking time for um, whoever it is around me that I'm going to need to care for. If you're a parent and you're burnt out, it's going to be really hard for you to do anything, especially for your kids or with your kids. If you are, um, if you have a side hustle, or if you have any hobbies, any social clubs, any, any times you're actually engaged in the community and you're burnt out, it can just be something that, that used to en you used to enjoy or feed your soul. It could just be, this is one more thing I have to do. We have to have hard boundaries and say, when I'm done with work, I'm done with work. Now, if you have problems holding those boundaries, because we are afraid of not having enough money or not being able to um, grow in your career or get to your ambitions quick enough. Once again, we need to go to that scheduling. We need to be able to say, hey, what is a realistic time for my, for my goals? Not being patient. We're not gonna say being patient. We're gonna say, hey, if I wanna look like, if I wanna look like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, it might take a year. If I want to get a million dollars, it's probably gonna take more than a week. We have to be able to say, I need to realistically say, this is my time frame. I'm going to then say, this is how much I can work in a week. 
at that 40 hour mark, I'm done. I'm into personal life because that 40 hour should be enough to for you to meet your goals. If it's not, we need to re we need to reevaluate how we're doing that. Take a quick step back. I want to go back to perfectionism real quick. And I'm actually going to bring back up that uh, cognitive distortions list. If I, once again, I can use the screen sharing thing. Okay, cool. All or nothing thinking. You look at things in absolute black and white concept. It's either good or it's not. It's either uh, perfect or it's terrible. It's worthless. The idea here, we need to say good enough is good enough. I am not perfect at everything. I am doing a lot of this webinar very free form. I'm very confident I can do it. I've done this plenty of times before. I've done very formalized sessions with Pineapple Support and other organizations, but I'm not going to be perfect. And I don't want to be. Imperfect is fine. I was actually just listening to a uh, coaching call with one of my um, one of my genius mentors. Her name's Amber Lida. She said, back in the day, everyone wanted the expert. Now we want the relationship. And the relationship with anyone has to be imperfect. We have to be able to see other people's foibles. I'm not exactly the best at tongue twisters. Whatever it is that's actually going to be real. Because if you're just putting on a facade, if you're just trying to be perfect for everyone, for your business, for yourself, the idea is no one's seeing the real you and you're not getting the things that you actually want. I'm gonna say that differently, but I'm gonna say it simplified. If you're trying to be perfect, you're not going to be getting the things you're actually wanting. Now, here's where we go into a little bit deeper. Well, let's talk about self-sabotage real quick. Self-sabotage in this realm is, I need to be perfect because, or I need to work 80 hours a week, or I need to work so much to get everything done, because if I don't, I kick my own ass. That's the self-judgment talk. I don't want to get too, too far into self-judgment because I've talked about it in other presentations and we don't have enough time to explore it too, too much. But the idea is a lot of times if we feel like we aren't doing enough, we start to feel guilty or we say something like, I can't be a burden. I can't be imperfect because I may be perfect to get love, get on my own self-acceptance, acceptance from others. I need to be perfect to get the Lamborghini I want or the house I want or the lifestyle I want. And if I don't, I just kick my own ass. Now, maybe you don't have this problem, but I have plenty of clients who do, all of them, mm, most of them. It's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Kicking our own ass in order to get what we want. Once again, the idea is if we are beating ourselves up, if we're being pushing ourselves too far, we're not getting what we think we are supposed to be getting. We're not, excuse me, say it a different way. We are not actually aligned. We're not actually facing the thing we want. A lot of the times people will say, Steve, once I do X, Y, and Z, then I will be able to love myself. And I say, okay, cool. Wouldn't it be better to just love yourself first and then pursue X, Y, and Z? And once again, they fight me on it. If you are someone who's experiences that, my first thing to tell you is the guilt or the kick your own ass or the self-judgment that you experience. All it is, is you trying to protect yourself. So you trying to protect yourself from either further disappointment or being hurt or being judged. It's a lot. It's, yeah. And the idea here is we have to say, just because I'm imperfect, just because I'm make, taking the time for myself, the self-care, the re-energization that I need, doesn't mean I'm a bad person doesn't mean I'm screwing up my life. It doesn't mean I'm causing any problems. It doesn't mean I'm a burden on other people. It just means I'm a human being and that I need time for myself and energy and everything else. I fall into overgeneralizations about myself, my own feelings, weakness a lot. Yeah. 
you and a lot of other people. It's it's a lot. If you can say things as my clients say, I'm very forgiving and open for everyone, and I'm the worst judge on myself. And it's like the idea is like if I just judge myself enough, if I just kick my own ass enough, one day I'll be able to fix all the things I don't like about myself. Which sounds exhausting. It doesn't actually help people that much. The person with disabilities, that's incredibly helpful here. Glad to help, Natalie. Good. Very happy to hear that. Okay. And let's see. All right. I'm going to pause here for a second. Let me just make sure I got everything. Um, actually, I got one more thing. Let's go back to that should statement. It's tied to everything else. I really want, yeah, we talked about I should be a certain way. I should um, be perfect, be Dwayne The Rock Johnson, be like data from Enterprise, uh, excuse me, data from Star Trek The Next Generation, having no feelings and having actually no needs. So I'm not a burden on other people. And um, all you gotta do is plug me in every so often. I'm taking no resources from anyone, all that crap. I really wanna go towards shouldn't for a second. Now this is the this this we can do a whole hour on a webinar on should it. The idea, I have a very rigid belief about how I should not be. Well, let's talk a little bit about overcompensation as self sabotage. Let's say we have an ambition. I want to be the owner of my company. I want to be a CEO, company of ten thousand people. Well, I want to do that. But I shouldn't ever be mean, hurtful, evil, aggressive. The idea there is maybe we're overcompensating. Maybe the idea is we, uh, we uh, a lot of times we work with, um, I don't want to put this, men and women who are tired of being doormats and being walked all over. And now they want to get a little bit better of a handle on their assertiveness and aggression and empowerment. And a lot of times they'll say, Steve, the thought of making anyone cry or even just making anyone even a little sad makes me sick, makes me nauseous, makes me so guilty. And I say, I'm not here to make you as heartless as I am, but I do need you to be able to bear your fangs sometimes and say, hey, you can feel what feel bad. I can feel bad that you feel bad, but I'm still pursuing this action or you still have to face your consequences. The idea, if there's something you have about yourself, you say, I can't be a certain way or I shouldn't be a certain way. And that comes with self-judgment and that's feeding into your self-sabotage or it's feeding into the burnout as in, I can't be someone who relaxes. I can't be someone who's lazy. And by lazy, I mean, just takes the amount of time that you need to re-energize and chill for a minute, taking a vacation. Then first, your, your standards you set yourself to are superhuman, or at least so high that they're exhausting. And second, we need to really see where that comes from. What's the worst thing about having human needs? about being able to take a vacation and really challenge those rigid beliefs of what I should not be or cannot be. All right. Well, that was a lot of information. I hope I'm not overwhelming you guys too much. Let's pause here. If you have any questions or need any more information, I would be happy to provide it at Prosperity Counseling and check out my website or just call me if you are looking for any services. If you're looking for services through Pineapple Support, feel free to message them and they can contact me. And let me see if I'm forgetting something. I think that's it. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope you all have a great day and rest of your weekend. And uh, yeah, take care. Thank you guys.